Hello, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and welcome to part three in our series on the basics of the Remove tool. So in this part, what we're going to do is how to remove a foreground object that is moving over more than one plane in the background. And this is going to be one of the most common things that you have to do with the Remove tool. In the previous two examples from part one and part two, we were removing a foreground object on a single background plane. And this is quite simple to remove because you've only got to deal with that one plane in the background rather than multiple levels of parallax. In this example, we want to remove the businessman from the foreground, but we're actually dealing with two separate major planes. We've got the ground plane that he's walking on and we've got the background wall, which he's passing over. And these two planes are very, very different to each other. One is basically perpendicular to the other. So if we try to track one single background shape to do the remove here, we're going to get tearing and artifacts because the planes are moving in different spaces. So what we're going to do is actually draw and track two separate planes to help remove a single foreground object. So to start off with, I've already drawn the remove mask that I want to actually put around the character. You've already seen how we draw this mask in the previous example, so we thought we'd speed up some time and just show you the final result. So here I've just done a very basic garbage mat around the man. I haven't even animated any of this. I've just made a very large and lazy shape that accommodates all of his motion. So if we look at this, we can see his arm swings up and we've accommodated for that with this little bit of mask here. And the same goes for his feet. We've just done a nice wide cone shape down the bottom to make sure that his feet are completely covered. Now you could be more accurate with this and actually make sure that the shape animates with the overall motion, but I'm feeling lazy, so we're going to just keep it as a nice broad shape. And most of the time Mocha is pretty forgiving with this. It does depend on the type of background you're working with, but in this case we've got a nice basic example, so I'm only giving it a rough garbage mat to begin with. The next thing we need to do is track the ground plane. So I've already again done that, and you can see the tracking methods in the previous examples, but here we have our ground plane, and we'll just turn on the surface and grid so we can see what that ground plane looks like. And I'll turn on the masks as well so we can see what's going on. So all I've done is track a very large shape that covers all the way across where his feet are sitting. I've actually done a little bit too much over here, but it's always best to be generous with this kind of stuff. Overall, you only usually have to just track the area of the background that he's going to be behind, but I've got a little bit further over here. We could probably pull this at the end of the shot to about here if we wanted to, just to make that more efficient, because the larger your shape is, the slower your render is going to be. So now that I've done the ground plane, I'm also drawing a shape for the back wall as well. And we've also done that, so I'm going to turn on my wall background here, and let's have a look at that one. So again, all I've done is a very large perspective track on the back wall here, and just encompassed this entire area. You can see there's not a lot of parallax going on in the subtlety of the wall back here, so I don't need to do any more additional shapes to make sure that that parallax is captured. It's going to be enough of a background to help remove him from the shot without getting any tearing or artifacts. So once we have our two main shapes, our background wall and our background ground, as well as our foreground mask, we can now use these three shapes to completely remove him from the shot. The way we accomplish this is to join the layers together and then use both of them in tandem to remove it all at once. And what I mean by that is we can use the linking tool to actually attach these shapes together. So up here in the tool panel, we've got this thing called attach one layer to another. And all I've done here is actually physically link one shape and attached it to the other shape. So we get a seamless line between the wall shape and the ground shape. And I've done the same on the other side. So if we come back to the end of the shot here, we can see I've also attached the wall to the ground shape over on this edge. And you basically just join up the points all the way along where these two backgrounds meet. So there's absolutely no overlap going on between them. The reason that you want to have no overlap is because anything that is above another layer in the layer stack is actually going to occlude the layer 
underneath. Just like we do here with the actual foreground layer, it's actually occluding our ground and our wall, you can see here by the open track mat. We don't want to do that for our background layers because then you will get some strange tearing going on around where they overlap. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it will actually work out fine, but if there's any strange motion going on around the join area, you won't be able to get a clean remove. So it's really, really handy to be able to link these two shapes together to get an absolutely seamless join between the two background shapes. So now that I've linked my two background shapes together, I'm just going to come to the start of the shot, so we'll go all the way to the beginning, and I'm going to now remove my foreground object by just clicking on that remove object. We'll just turn off our mats a little bit here, and we'll start rendering forwards. Now, like in the previous example, I've decided to use a linear illumination modeling technique here, just to make sure there's no subtle light changes as the camera pans through the scene. With all removes, we do recommend that you start with none in the illumination modeling, just to make it a fast render. But in this case, I know that if I set it to none, I'm going to get some subtle light problems as we remove from the ground area. So I've set it to linear to make sure that those lighting changes are accommodated for as we render through the shot. But let's go ahead and click render, and we can see how now it's going to analyze the shot through two layers and remove him from the shot correctly. So I'm going to start speeding up the recording now so you can see the render in completion and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so the render's finished, so let's just play back. And we can see that's done a pretty good job of cleaning him out of the shot using those two layers. So that's one method of doing the remove with multiple backgrounds. We create our separate backgrounds and track them, and then we join them together to create a seamless set of planes all joined together with their control points. So that wraps up this three-part series on the basics of the Remove tool. If you've got any questions about the methodologies or processes used in the Remove tool, please do go to the forums at imagineersystems.com and ask us any questions you may have. You can also contact us at support at imagineersystems.com or through Twitter or our Facebook page. This has been Martin Brennan, Product Manager for Imagineer Systems.